Okay, so there are probably three main ways to treat adult ADHD. The first is self-help. Individuals quite often find ways that improve their functioning. Sometimes these are not particularly adaptive. A, a, a very typical um, way that children find to pass exams is to leave everything till the last moment. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people who have actually done quite well in exams, but they've, they've tried to do their dissertation in, in 48 hours, or they've tried to study for an A-level in, in, in six hours. There is something that happens when an individual leaves things to the last moment. They become quite anxious, and they get a huge adrenaline drive from the anxiety. And that often kicks in what's called hyperfocus which is this suddenly they can concentrate and they find that if they work till six o'clock in the morning, don't have any sleep and do their exam, they will perform quite well and then they fall asleep. <laughs> um, this only works to a certain degree. It's very difficult to get a PhD thesis done doing it in the last, in the last 10 minutes. Um, and increasingly that adaptive mechanism becomes maladaptive over time and stops working. In terms of further aspects of self-help, people learn to keep lists. Sometimes they keep lists about lists and then don't follow those lists, but um, people do that. They often find, people often with ADHD often find, and this is, this is reliable, they often find that physical exercise helps enormously. And some people are only able to maintain their concentration through regular physical exercise. It's the release of dopamine and the release of endorphins, which have an, a profound effect. Anybody who exercises knows that you, when you've finished re regular exercise, you feel very focused and, and, uh, and the fog lifts. And of course, this is, uh, this is, this is the, the mechanism that people use. Sometimes it's not always possible to maintain those sort of levels of physical exercise due to injury or... or other factors, and uh, sometimes th this then fails. Other ways that people try to self-help are not necessarily as adaptive. Nicotine works, however chain smoking is not recommended as a, as a treatment for ADHD, but it does work, and some people actually use nicotine tablets or patches. Um, caffeine has a temporary f effect on concentration, but very rapidly becomes toxic, so one double espresso may well get your concentration going. Two usually gives you a headache. So it has a what's called a narrow therapeutic window. Um, turning next to the physical treatments for ADHD, this is the mainstay of treatment, to be honest, because they are extremely effective. And they work straight away, which is which is remarkable for a psychiatrist who's used to treating people with antidepressants that take three weeks to work, you get an immediate effect from ADHD treatments, the majority of ADHD treatments. They are predominantly dopamine and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors. In other words, they are stimulant drugs. They release or um, reduce the clear away of dopamine and noradrenaline. They have a primary effect at low dose in the frontal part of the brain, which is the area of the brain that is underperforming. So the, the effect of stimulants in low dose is often to calm down hyperactivity, improve focus, improve concentration, and reduce procrastination. That works, as I say, within one to two hours of beginning treatment, and therefore you can tailor and titrate the dose to produce the right effect. Taking too much stimulant actually activates all of the brain and you get agitated. So it's about trying to tailor the dose to the individual need. Um, there are other treatments for ADHD, physical treatments. There are, there, there are um, noradrenaline releases and there are other agents uh, which have just been introduced, such as guanfacine, which is, a, which is an alpha-2A receptor agonist, but the majority of physical treatments for um, ADHD are stimulants. This worries some people because they worry about issues like addiction, tolerance, dependence, abuse. What I would say is that these problems do exist, but they are nowhere near as marked as people think. 
If we use relatively long-acting stimulants, such as Concerta or Alvance, the, the rates of abuse are minimal. The rates of tolerance are low. By tolerance, I mean the effect dis disappearing with the same dose. So it's possible to stabilise people on long-acting treatments for ADHD quite quickly, and they will often stay on the same dose for a long time. Often people reduce the dose themselves or fluctuate the dose. And certainly my experience in treating a lot of people with ADHD is there is not a great deal of misuse of these drugs. Certainly the shorter acting treatments like daxamphetamine and Ritalin, there is an abuse potential, but it is nowhere near as marked as, for example, with benzodiazepines, Valium, drugs like that. Um, and I think a lot of the worry about uh, tolerance, dependence, addiction is ill-founded. Ill the final group of treatments is psychological treatments. Now, having said that a, this is primarily a brain condition, there is good evidence that cognitive behavioural therapy, particularly that tailored for ADHD, is effective, certainly in the milder conditions, and certainly as an add-on to physical treatment. So often the best results are, are obtained through self-help, medication used appropriately, and psychological therapy by a psychologist who knows how to treat ADHD. And the combination of the three things often produces the best outcome. Psychological therapy on its own can be effective, particularly in the milder conditions. If somebody has very severe ADHD, I would be recommending physical treatment first. But certainly in the milder conditions, and we can quantify this through the assessment, um, some people opt for purely psychological therapy with very good results. About 70 to 75 percent of people respond to one or other of the treatments, the physical treatments, which is extremely high. There is high response rate compared to 30 to 40 percent for antidepressants. Uh, this, this is, you know, a very effective treatment. The important thing is, is to find the right treatment for the person and not everybody responds the same way to, to medication. There is a big variability in um, genetic response. You know, some people respond to tiny doses, some people respond to very large doses and it's about finding the right treatment.